<laughs> this summer, 13 players begin the ultimate game of negotiation, the greenhouse. To succeed, players must forge alliances, weigh short-term and long-term play, and decide when to make their move. One by one, the players will be voted out, and the winner must earn the respect of the people they eliminate, while not being so assertive that they become a target in the process. Each week, three players will enter the greenhouse and claim power for the week and will help determine which player will get banished at the end of each cycle. The game of the greenhouse has its own currency, seeds. Players who earn seeds will be able to buy power in the competition. 13 enter, one will leave. This is the greenhouse. Watch the four learn the game videos to get the hang of the greenhouse format. I've also included the rule book in the description below if you would like to read the rules for yourself. Hi there, plants, outside, competition, negotiation. What do these words mean to you? Let's explore that together. All right, welcome to the first ever season of The Greenhouse. This video is an instruction video to help you learn the rules of the game. I'll talk through some potential strategies as well. All right, you guys, now we will go through a normal round of The Greenhouse. Um, there are many steps and it is a bit complex, but I promise you, you'll get the rhythm of the game very quickly. So at the start of every week, we have one opening greenhouse challenge. In that challenge, the top three competitors will enter the greenhouse in the order that they rank. Let's go there now. All right, so the three players who enter the greenhouse will play a Dirty Santa white elephant type game to determine who gets what powers for the week. For the first phase of the game, these are the three powers in the greenhouse. First, the sunflower. Second, the rose. And third, the tulip. The sunflower nominates two players for banishment each week, and the two players that they nominate receive seeds. That's the in-game currency that I will explain in a minute. The rose nominates one player for banishment and breaks ties in the event of a tie at elimination vote ceremonies. Lastly, the tulip. The tulip will block two players from voting at every banishment ceremony. The players who have their votes blocked will then be able to save those votes for future eliminations. All members of the greenhouse are immune for the week and cannot be nominated. All right, now we will run a practice session of how the greenhouse flower picking ceremony goes. So uh, in this hypothetical situation, we just did the first challenge of the week. Bob came in first, Holly came in second, and I came in third, flop. So uh, the way it works is it starts with the third place finisher and works its way up to the first place. So I go first. I would like to have Tulip because I don't wanna nominate anyone this week and it's just a safe move. Holly will go next. <laughs> I am going to snatch the tulip. Okay, so Holly steals from me, and once that you're stolen from, you have to choose something that has not been picked yet. So I'm going to choose the rose. Bob goes last. So Bob also steals from Holly, and Holly must pick the sunflower because she can't re-steal after being stolen from. So in this situation, Bob would be Tulip, Holly would be Sunflower, and I would be Rose. That's how it goes. One more quick note, Sunflower nominates first and then the Rose nominates. So the Rose makes the third nomination that occurs. If the Sunflower nominates someone that the Rose wanted to nominate, too bad, the Rose has to figure out someone else to pick. After the greenhouse competition, everyone will know who has what power for the week. And after some time to mingle and deliberate, everyone will come to the basketball court where we will do the seed and immunity challenge. Before the challenge begins, I will put one minute on the clock and I will say anyone who wants to compete for immunity, go on this side of the court. And anyone who wants to compete for two seeds, go on this side of the court. Then for a minute long period, players will be able to choose each side and switch sides based on who they might compete against. And then at the end of the time, uh, we will see who will be competing for immunity and who will be competing for seeds. Everyone will know who's competing for what, including the greenhouse players. 
Then, after the competitions have been chosen, the seed and immunity competition uh, will happen simultaneously for the most part. The first place finisher in the immunity competition is safe for the week and cannot be nominated or banished. The winner of the seed competition will win two seeds that they can keep and use whenever they want. After the seed and immunity challenge and everyone knows who the winners are, there will be more time for mingling and strategizing and then we will move to the nomination ceremony where first the Sunflower will nominate two players for banishment and each of those players will receive a seed. The Rose will nominate the third player for banishment and all three of these players will be at risk of elimination. One of them will be banished by the end of the week. Also, when I say week, I mean round. It's just kind of the way we talk here. Before we move on to the next part of the round, I'm going to talk about the in-game currency seeds. It's these green poker chips that you will earn throughout the game. Every player starts off the game with one seed. You can earn seeds in a few different ways. First is by winning the seed immunity challenge uh, during the week that we just discussed. Another way is to be nominated by the sunflower. And also, players are allowed to trade and give each other seeds. If I know that my friend Holly is about to get nominated, and I want to give her some seeds before the auction starts, then I can take it out of my bucket and put it in Holly's. I do want to say that in the times that we've tested the game online, it's very common for allies to pool and share seeds, so be ready to do that. But also don't be so quick to give all your stuff away. What? Another way to get seeds is that often in the game we will have different active seed hunts. These are activities that if you complete them, you could get extra seeds. Think of them as fun Easter egg hunts or competitive icebreaker activities. That's pretty much the way they go. Now let's talk about what you can buy with your seeds. First off, at any time that is not auction time, you can buy a seed count by a uh, Giving Holly a seed, she will show you our Excel sheet of how many seeds everyone in the game has. It's a good way to make sure that you are making a plan correctly if you're trying to pull off a big move. Um, it's a really good way to orient yourself once that the game has started to get a lot more complex and seeds are kind of flying everywhere. After the nomination ceremony, we will have a live auction. The auction will last for 15 minutes and everyone will have their bucket of seeds. This is the only time of the game that you can trade live. So for example, if Holly and I are walking around and um, I want to give Holly some seeds so that she can start bidding at the auction, then we can sneak around the corner and then I give her my seeds. Assume that this is Holly standing over here. <laughs> for the auction, items won't be put up for bidding. Uh, players themselves will have to just raise a bid on the item that they want. Now let's get to the items up for auction. First up is the Uproot. An Uproot allows you to save one of the nominees from banishment. If you use the Uproot on one of the nominees, they are no longer vulnerable to be banished from the game. The starting price is three seeds, uh, so you cannot start bidding on Uproot until you have three seeds to bid. Once that someone bids, another person can then raise four seeds. Oh no, I want to bid five seeds, so on. I hope you know how an auction works. The only time you can match a bid is if it is your maximum bid. So let's say for example, this bucket, um, this person has five seeds. So if I am in a bidding war for Uproot, they start by bidding three, I bid four, they bid five. I only have five seeds, so I can't outbid them. However, because I only have five seeds and it's my maximum bid, I can therefore bid five seeds and match them. If the timer ends while the bid is matched, we will random.org uh, the winner of the bid. I will say that in all of the games that I've run of the greenhouse, I don't believe any bid has ever ended in a match. Only the person who wins the bid pays the seeds. During the first phase of the game, whenever Uproot is used, uh, the nominee is not replaced. So since there are three nominees, if Uproot is used, the two remaining nominees are the final nominees. This changes in the second half of the game. I'll explain that when we get there. Next up is Drought. If you want to simplify the game and take out all of the banked votes, this is the object for you. At a starting price of five seeds, the player who wins this can decide whether or not to end banked votes for the game. If Drought is played at the following banishment ceremony, 
Anyone who has banked votes must play banked votes. And the tulip as a power is removed from the game. It's a great way to simplify the game. If you find that the other alliance has all of the banked votes, it's a good way to really weaken your enemies. Uh, I will be honest with you, no one has ever purchased drought. We're still waiting to see who's bold enough to do it. Next up is Green Thumb. The starting price for Green Thumb is four seeds. You can't start bidding until you have four seeds in your name. The Green Thumb is a pretty big advantage. Right after any greenhouse challenge, the holder of the Green Thumb can play it and ask to replace one of the winners in the challenge. So say for example, Brody, Holly, and Thomas won the greenhouse challenge and I don't trust Thomas at all. I could play this Green Thumb and replace Thomas in the greenhouse. So now, the three people in the greenhouse are Brody, Holly, and me. One more thing about Green Thumb is that only one Green Thumb can be in the game at a time. So once that someone has purchased Green Thumb, it will not be added back to the shop's stock until it has been played. The last power is a Venus Flytrap. This is the most powerful power in the game. At a starting price of 10 seeds, uh, you can only start bidding on this if you have 10 seeds in your name. The person who buys the Venus Flytrap can automatically banish anyone they want from the game, even if that person has immunity. The person with the Venus Flytrap can eliminate the person who's a sunflower, the person who won the immunity competition, anybody. Everyone's fair game, ultimate power, drama. With the Venus Flytrap, one thing to keep in mind, it will only be purchased once per season. Once that this is played and someone is eliminated with one single vote, the Venus Flytrap is removed from the game and is no longer part of the season. One more thing about the Venus Flytrap, it virtually cancels the round. So once that someone buys the Venus Flytrap, consider the nominations null and void. The only decision that matters is who the Venus Flytrap wants to banish. Once that they banish someone, the round resets and we start a new week of the greenhouse. One thing to note is that Uproot, Green Thumb, and Venus Flytrap are all passable. So if for whatever reason I bought one of these items but I don't want to be the one to use it, I could hand it over to an ally after I've purchased it so that they can play it. So for example, if I have Green Thumb and I know I'm about to get voted out, I could hand it over to an ally and they could keep it once that I'm gone. So after the auction and the nominees are finalized, everyone who can vote will receive a blue voting chip. The Sunflower and the Rose can't vote, and the two or three nominees can't vote either. Everyone else can, including the Tulip. So everyone who is eligible to vote will receive their blue chip. All of the players will see clearly who is able to vote. Before dispersing, the Tulip will block two players from voting. Those two players will have their blue chips taken away, and they will instead be given red chips that they have to wait to use. So then, it's time to vote. With your chip, you will walk up to the voting booth, which will have flower pots for each of the nominees. You will say something to the camera about why you are making a decision, and you will place your voting chip into the bucket of the person that you want to see eliminated from the game. Additionally, in later rounds, if you've accumulated red chips, you can play them as additional banked votes. So let's say it's round three, and I've accumulated two chips. If I'm a nominee, I'm able to come up and vote even though as a nominee I don't receive a blue chip. Because I've already accumulated these two red chips, I could use them at whatever elimination ceremony I want. So as a nominee, I'll walk over to the voting booth and I'll say, I know Brody's getting a lot of votes tonight. So to save myself, two chips to Brody. One thing to note is that if you have been blocked by the tulip, you cannot use your banked votes. Like during that week that you've been blocked. Nominees can use bank votes, Sunflower and Rose can use bank votes, and normal voters can also use bank votes. The person with the most votes in their bucket will be eliminated from the greenhouse, whisked away on the golf cart, and will have an exit interview with Anna. So everything we've just discussed is the general skeleton of a normal greenhouse round. 